This is the best local sports show in Jacksonville. Action Sports Jacks Prime Time. Brought to you by Larry's Giant Subs. Looking so forward today. It's been a long, you know, and I've been, I came earlier than some of the vet guys, so I had like three extra practices on top of them. So like how they're feeling, I'm a little bit more beat up than that, but I'm good though, man. That's uh, Jerry and Jones. He was excited about a day off today yeah. for the Jags. Uh, former FSU cornerback, of course, talking about Sunday's day off. He goes through his first training camp in the NFL. A little rest and recovery time for those guys, not for us. It's this time it's dead. Hi, everybody. Jags week one of training camp is over. Martin Owen Hicken here to chat it up and break down the four days. Well, there's two ways to look at things so far. Either we have the 85 Bears defense or, <laughs> yeah. our, defense, or our offense is in deep trouble. No. All right, I kid because I care. But I will tell you after watching Saturday's morning practice, the passing game needs work to put it mildly. Hmm. Wait a minute, Dan. Are you saying it's time to hit the uh... already? Shut that off. Shut that off. Not, not yet. Uh, not it's yet. a staple here on Action Sports. Nothing Jack's better than the old time. panic button, right? But we usually wait until, like, the middle of the season. We yeah. ask when on the schedule should yeah. you hit it. Yeah, no, not no. day four of training no, camp. No, no, no. We, we're just having some fun here. <laughs> However, <laughs> the boys. They're not having fun on offense. Not having fun on offense, man. They, uh, boy, they had problems just hooking up yesterday. Trevor had a bad day, to be sure. The receivers didn't seem to get much separation. And the defense has come out like gangbusters. We can spin it any way you want, because you will. And I will <laughs> caution all of us that it's still July. September matters, right? But things do need to get better on the throwing front starting somewhat quickly. As for the defense, though, they're really happy. Good stuff, right? You want to hear from Devin Lloyd? I think we're all just looking to get better. Um, you know, everybody has um, areas of improvement. And so, um, you know, they make some plays, we'll make some plays. Um, we're, that's what it's about, though. Iron sharpens iron. We just continue to, um, you know, help each other, one another, you know, get to where we want to be so we can be in the Super Bowl, which is where we all want to be. Of course, that's where they want to be. But that offense is going to have to look a lot better than uh, it has already these last couple of days. And again, yeah. it, it might seem like a lot to talk about one practice. But right. then I just talk about this. I've been a lot of practices over the years. Yeah. For the offense, it was an ugly practice. Like they couldn't get a yard. They couldn't execute. They could, usually you see give and take. Even yeah. on a bad day, you get, you get something. Year 30, right, of the Jags. <laughs> it was one of the worst throwing practices I've I've ever seen, and I've seen some bad ones. We had some bad teams, and you don't expect that from Trevor Lawrence, okay? I mean, and listen, and it's not all his fault. No, I mean, it's not like there, but there are some throws. I mean, you know, Mark Brunel once told me, when you're throwing against air, you should never miss a pass as yeah. an NFL quarterback. Yeah. We're missing passes. We're missing short throws. We're missing verticals, uh, over the middle stuff bouncing on the ground. I don't know if the defense knows the plays that are coming. They have a heads up on I, You know, there's some of that as well, but – you got to win some battles. Yeah. The receivers got to win some battles. Trevor's got there will be times where he goes back to pass on Saturday. Look, look, nobody's open. I mean, it's it was not good. Well, you're looking at those two guys. That's Press Taylor and Doug Peterson. Yeah. It's their offense. And the question that won't go away about this offense is mm -hmm. who's calling the plays. Well, <laughs> we didn't think we'd be asking about it. May not matter right yet. <laughs> In training camp. <laughs> hey, Doug, can you call the plays? Yeah. I don't think it's a play calling issue no. yet. No. No, <laughs> that's. <laughs> that whole thing's kind of curious, too. It's just, uh, listen, I mean, don't you think it's Press Taylor's going to be calling the plays? He's going to be calling the plays. Everybody place. wants Doug Peterson to call the plays, but I think Press Taylor's going to be calling the plays. And listen, if he never said anything, we wouldn't know who was calling the plays because I don't think it was, Press Taylor was handcuffed a little bit last year because the offense couldn't get third and one yeah. or fourth and one or third and two. In fact, by, by November, they gave up. They just said, all right, third and one, shotgun, no running back. We're throwing. That's it. Uh, <laughs> listen, I don't think Doug's going to answer that anytime soon. He does uh, talk to the media tomorrow morning, but I think this will be bigger picture you ask about him again. The, uh, <laughs> I think this will be bigger picture about the offense. But listen, yeah. it's hard to the, the offense needs a good day tomorrow in practice. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. You know, I mean, got to build up some confidence here in some of these reps. Yeah. Uh, hey, what shouldn't be lost on the start of training camp is the play of the defense. Well, that's true. And maybe we shouldn't get carried away with that either. Yeah. But it's a new scheme with Ryan Nielsen now calling the shots. 4-3 versus a 3-4. Beefed up Josh Hines-Allen on the edge. Beefed up uh, Trayvon Walker yeah. as well. Tyson Campbell, his new contract. New faces along the line in the secondary. New responsibilities for Devin Lloyd. He beefed up too. Yeah. 
There's a lot to like as the Jags hit the practice fields this week for the tra more training camp action, Dan. But this first impression of the Ryan Nielsen defense is they've got a lot of parts. And so far, they're adapting very nice to this yeah, new so scheme. So far, so good on the defensive side of off. You want some stats on Nielsen's one season with the Falcons. Doubled their sack total from 21 to 42. Ooh, I like that, we'll right? Take we take a need two that. for one. Yeah, Atlanta's <laughs> yards allowed per game rank improved from 27 all the way up to 11. Nielsen's defense led the league in man coverage, lining up in man more than 63% of the time. Well, so far through four days of practices, he leads the NFL against their own offense. <laughs> Pretty safe to say. That's fair. I'm not sure anybody's other offense looks That's as bad true. as the Jags have oh boy. so far. A lot to digest in the first week of camp and a lot of interviews. So let's hear from a couple of the coaches under the theme of best stuff we heard this week, Dan. How about it? All right. Let's start with Ryan Nielsen. He was asked about how the players on the defensive side of the ball were receiving him and his new staff. One of the things is players, they, they, don't, they don't care what you know until they know how much you care and our staff spending time with the guys it's been really important we have good guys i, I love to be around our players they're 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 really cool uh guys they, they care so much you hope that that comes across to them that that you you really care about them on and off the field you know they, that's what it's about one of the players said this, this team will only be one year together you know, some of the staff will leave, some of, and you want it to be so good for these guys this one year. Win, play the best that you can, get that across to them that, man, I really care about you as a person, as a player. And that's why sometimes we're coaching you hard or, you know, we, we're putting you in adverse situations that we want you to be the best. That's the biggest unknown coming into this camp. Uh, the yeah. Jags new defensive coordinator and you know, pretty quick rise through the rank stand with Neil. So you can tell he's well respected in the league. Spent some time coaching the D-line, New Orleans, where he worked his way up to defensive coordinator. One season in Atlanta, where he's the head man, uh, where the head man was fired. Uh, so Nielsen was scooped up from a yeah. trip in Disney World <laughs> with his family yeah. and and got the job. And again, I don't know what this is going to look like in the fall, but so far so good. I kind of like what he said there in this respect, and it's a great point. And and, and I think he reminded the players that really. We only have one year together. So there has to be, there is a sense of urgency, right? Because things in the NFL change. I mean, every year we talk about how many new people, a new percentage, you know, is, what is it, like 40% of oh, teams yeah. over, change over the year. So I kind of like that whole thing of, look, this is us. This is our year. This is who we got. Let's go make some things happen and, and enjoy the year and win and celebrate and have fun and worry about next year later. The one interesting thing, when you fire a coach and then you bring somebody else in, almost every comment that's made about the new coach in a nice way mm -hmm almost criticizes the old coach. That's fair. And the one thing that you continue to hear about Nielsen and this staff mm -hmm. is teaching and details. Yeah. They feel like this guy's going to coach the guys up better than mm -hmm. I think Mike Caldwell, and the details will be more of a focal point, and the players have said that so far. Well, so. again, and, you know, we've said this a lot, but as, as training camp now is upon us, expectations are high inside that building by the higher ups, oh, including yeah. the main man who doled out a lot of money <laughs> this offseason. Hey, back on the offensive <laughs> side, the Jags opted to keep the running back group intact from last season. We think even more touches for ETN coming up this year, and that could be good. Yeah, plus the Jags are giving third round pick Tank Bigsby a lot of leeway heading into year two. He's got to be better. Jags offensive coordinator Press Taylor on his stable of running backs. We're kind of making the push as a, as a run unit of just understanding the, the targeting with everything. And the way we target certain blocks is going to determine where we think the ball will go. Now we want him to be very disciplined in the reads that we're giving him with the run game. Um, and then we're trying to overexpose him in the pass game, give him a ton of different things that he's got to do, that he's got to see a lot of reps. Um, because, you know, the more they're in those situations, the more we're getting trust in them, the more they're, they're getting trust in themselves. And more importantly, the quarterbacks are getting trust in those guys. I want you to think about that phrase you just said, overexpose them in the passing game. To yeah. me, that's all about ETN. Yeah. If you want to compare, um, compare to Alvin Kamara and the Christian McCaffrey's of the world, those guys catch it some 80 times in a season. 58 catches last year for ETN. I'm all for getting ETN more involved in the pass game. You remember that catch he had against Pittsburgh on oh, the yeah. sideline? I mean, that's the kind of thing that they, I think they want for ETN. And he's a playmaker. He's explosive. And listen, the Jags got him. I mean, listen, it's kind of an unfair thing in the running back world. But, yeah. you know, you got him for this year. You got him, you know, and 
Use him. I mean, use him. Give him a lot of touches. Uh, he's had 1,000 yards running the last two years, right? Been very good. Yards per carry fell last season, but it wasn't all his fault. We all know that. So it'll be interesting to see. But, I, yeah, I would agree. I think they're going to get him out, get him in space. That's where he's dangerous. Get him on the move. Don't just have him turn around and sit down. And dare we say, run a screen or two. <laughs> yeah, which, which sometimes they've incorporated. He is yes. a guy that could take a six-yard pass play yes. and turn it into yes. 70. I mean, he is definitely that guy. So, uh, all for getting him the football more. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the National Football League. Hey, another week of Jags talk. It happens in real time with practice going on on our show. Instant video and reaction daily, plus reports from our Action Sports Shacks team. Join us 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on the Brenton Austin Show on the Action Sports Shacks 24-7 Network. We, we take a break on Action Sports Shacks Prime Time. Yeah. Cleveland, Florida. Well, yeah. Well, hmm. Is that a thing? The Jags hope Ezra can put his stamp on Jacksonville. That story coming up next. And Amelia Cobb brings home the 2024 First Coast Women's Amateur title. Susie Spottleson wins the Senior Championship Division. Tian Jones takes home Senior Field. Janice Wilson wins the Super Senior Division. They're all your champions. Congratulations, Tough ladies. plantation they had to play. Ooh. Hi, I'm franchise leading receiver Jimmy Smith. He's got a receiver, and it is caught Jimmy Smith at the five. Into the end zone, touchdown Jacksonville. And you're watching Action Sports Jacks. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. This is the best local sports show in Jacksonville. Action Sports Jacks Primetime. Brought to you by Larry's Giant Subs. I called Coach Stoops out of Oklahoma. And uh, I said, Coach, we got this, this kid at quarterback is going to be amazing. He said, get on the plane, fly out. I said, got some. And they had put in to read that everybody calls palms, palms now. Mm -hmm. I learned I was out there three days. I learned it. Yeah, we ended up going 4-0 against Tim Tebow. Oh, 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 a long time. <laughs> St. Austin High School football coach Joey Wiles reminiscing about the battles with Nice and their quarterback won Tim Tebow on after the game this week. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. To Action Sports Shacks Primetime. Martin Owen Hicken. High School football slate to start up this week, August 1st, to be specific. Yeah, we also got, what, Baker Sports Media Day yeah. coming up this week as well. Thursday. We'll be there talking to many of the high school football players and coaches, including Matt Toblin who started his high school coaching journey at Stanton and shared a great story from his time with the Blue Devils. We're, we're going over punt, and I'm trying to explain to the kids, like, you don't got to pick a fight at the line of scrimmage. You need to give a little bit of ground. Like, we're trying to form a pocket. And, like, it's not off its linemen, and they're confused. They don't get it. And I'm trying to explain And one of the kids looks at me, and he goes, you mean like an upside-down parabola? And I go, I, I, I mean, I don't have no idea what the kid is talking about. I go, yes. And then they all go, oh, can, can we do it? And so at that moment, then I started calling my, my coaching buddies. He's like, like, I can't stay here. I, I need to go somewhere else. Those kids are a lot smarter than me. <laughs> yes, they were a lot smarter than me. <laughs> Good story from Tolman. And, of course, we'll have his episode coming up on uh, Tuesday at 2 o'clock. You can replay it at 6 o'clock on the Action Sports Shacks 24-7 network. It uh, airs again on Friday. We put it up on YouTube. All the shows are up there. I'm telling you, if you like high school football, if you like storytelling, yeah. I, I get caught. I've listened to like each episode multiple times. It's, yeah, it's, it's good really stuff. fun stuff right now. Dan, high school football practice starts at midnight at places like Oakleaf. So very shortly as uh, the kids get going, obviously long summer, so it's kind of like go time. For these guys, they're excited about it. Yeah, we'll that. unveil some extended high school coverage on the new AS Jacks 24-7 network soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so we'll be there again media day. Uh, we'll all be out there yeah. on uh, Thursday um, for all the high school kids. Back to the Jags and so much criticism last year about the play of the offensive line. Biggest change at center with Mitch Morse taking over. But we never really got to see the best of Ezra Cleveland, who battled injuries much of last season. Dan. Yeah, one fun part about training camp is getting to know some of these Jaguars players for more than just the football side of things. For instance, Ezra had a busy offseason, signed an extension 
with the Jags, found a house in Jacksonville, and got married. Wow, another one. Yeah, Action Sports <laughs> Jack Stewart Weber chatting with the big lineman about off-season fun and comparing Jacks to Minneapolis. Let's talk a little golf. Uh, you play with the offensive linemen mostly? Uh, yeah, m majority of the time. So far, um, I kind of took a break from golf. Um, I usually go down in, to Arizona in the offseason and play golf, but I got married this offseason. So I took a I kind of stopped doing that and then uh, I focused on getting right, like training and stuff for this season. And, but I picked it up a little bit during the summer. You know, it gets hot, but you can you can bear the heat when you're golfing. Um, who's the stick of the group? Who, who's the who's the good golfer out of this offensive line? Offensive line, um, I think it's pretty neck and neck between Walker and uh, Blake Hans. You know, they're pretty consistent. Um, it's fun to golf with those guys. Um, but no, I would say they're 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 the better golfers. Favorite sure. course that you played here since since being in Jacksonville? Uh, Ponte Vedra Beach, I think. I think we play out there with Walker. I think he's a member out there. Um, but I'm going to be honest, I kind of just show up. I don't remember the names very well. A little different golfing here versus sure. Minnesota, uh, where you have, what, like a three-week window, four-week window? No, I know it's longer than that, but yeah. uh, a, a little different in, in northeast Florida. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely more humid. But, I mean, it gets hot up there in Minnesota in the summertime. Uh, don't don't sleep on it, but it's definitely hotter here. And it's a lot flatter, but play on by the ocean, you get the breeze off the ocean and stuff, so it feels good. You don't really get that in Minnesota. It's just stale. It's more than just golf, right? The difference between these two places. Yeah. Uh, how how much have you noticed that? Just you know, being able to, to step outside throughout the course of the year, not shoveling snow, not having to worry about that stuff now. And I'm sure your wife is extremely happy about that side of it as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, being here at the winter last year it was definitely weird. And a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but I don't really like it. Uh, I'm a fan of the snow and shoveling all that stuff, but the wife likes it. Um, one thing I am noticing, uh, summertime here, when we take our dog out, there's always mosquitoes, so that's a pain in the butt. Can't go out shirtless or anything, you should eaten alive by mosquitoes. But uh, no, it's nice. It's a, it's a nice time during the winter, and uh, once you get through the heat and stuff, it's not too bad. I guess they don't have hurricanes in Minneapolis, right? Yeah, you don't have to worry about that either. I tell you what, when it rains here, though, it rains. It's, it's, it's different for sure. Florida has. I think those are more gnats than mosquitoes, by the way. Those yeah. little pesty bugs this month have been awful. Uh, first and 10 training camp uh, weeknights, 11 15 on CBS 47 and Fox 30. Uh, we'll get that rolling again starting tomorrow night. Tons of Jags coverage with Action Sports Jags. Say hey, one thing about the NFL in 2024 if you're a top half quarterback in the NFL, guy who your club thinks can win a Super Bowl or going to get, you're going to get paid. Paid. And you're going to get paid, paid. Yeah. Look at these guys. Yeah. I mean, poor Patrick Mahomes is only making $45 million a year. Disgrace. It happened again <laughs> this week. Welcome to the $50 million per year club, Tua and Jordan. Yeah, uh, Jags, uh, week one opponent, Miami and Tua Tunga Vailoa. Yeah. And listen, you can ask yourself, are these guys worth this kind of money? I mean, time will tell, I guess. But the bottom line is, if you think you got your guy, you got to pay. I mean, this is like buying a house in today's market. It is crazy. I think a little bit of the head scratcher might be Jordan Love, though, the Green Bay Packers. Only in this respect, Brent. I mean, he's played one season, and the first half of the season, he wasn't very good. Second half of the season, he was lights out. Took him into the playoffs, deep run into the playoffs, had a chance to go to the Super Bowl. But, man, but he was due a deal because he had to sit for those years. Well, yeah, I mean, he had all the leverage in the world, yeah. really, because... He had one year to shine. I'll tell you what, if Green Bay has hit another home run oh, and they go from Favre to Aaron Rodgers to this cat and he's as good as those two, they are that's blessed. just not fair. By the way, over that time, they still only won two Super Bowls so yeah, far. Good point. Our guy Trevor recently got his $275 million deal. Yeah. And after Saturday's practice, <laughs> people weren't too excited about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it, listen, again, it's in line with everything else. Some are bigger on their guaranteed money. Some are bigger yeah. on their overall money. Some are bigger per year. The number to actually look at is percentage of the cap when these deals were done. Well, and the other thing, if Trevor is as good as they think he is, that will be a great deal. Absolutely. If he's not, it won't be. But the, the, the one thing all these guys, I think, have in common is every one of these teams ask themselves a question. Can we win a Super Bowl with this guy? And they have all obviously answered yes, they think they can. And most of them have put a lot around these guys now, too. Right. They spent a lot of money to do so. Hey, the PGA Tour stop is in Minnesota. Think you could two-putt from 96 feet for the win? Ooh. Find out if the pro could do it coming up next.
And a say hey and a shout out to some of our guys, the Ponte Vedra Hoopsters with summer signings today. Uh, all had great careers. They went to the Final Four, what, two years in a row? Cole Simmons, Ava Maria, Tyler Cowan to Thomas University, and my guy Sammy Ritchie headed to Emory and Henry. Congratulations to all. Job well done. My name is Devin Lloyd, and this is Action Sports Jags.